Thanks again for joining me on another exciting episode of Digital Dreams 321. I am your host, Quentin Howell. Today, we're going to be doing is a versus video the Nebula 4000 Lite versus the Kane 7500. Round one, fight! So obviously this is the Nebula 4000 Lite. It's a relatively new gimbal to the market. It's only been out for about six or seven months, if not less or more thereabouts. This gimbal has been out for about a year and a half, if not a little bit more. This gimbal I've just got, I had it for about two weeks, so I've been testing it out. So I thought to do a video to put these two side by side. Now, I, I thought to do that, obviously, because the price of this gimbal is coming down substantially. When it first came out, it was about 1200 bucks. Now it's about $1,000 or even less, depending on where you get it from. I got mine from kmtv.com or .net, I believe it's .com. And it didn't come with the stand, I had to buy that uh, separate, but it did come with a battery. I bought an extra battery. Uh, buying extra batteries are optional. Just like with this, I bought the extra battery because you can never have too many batteries when you're out in the field. Now I bought this particular gimbal because of its size and its form factor. It's a very sturdy gimbal. Uh, it's from, from my testing, it's, it's really good as long as you know the strengths and the weaknesses of it. And both gimbals have their strengths and weaknesses. So we're gonna talk about a couple different things. I'm gonna keep this video as short as possible. Now I'm gonna show you guys footage and you guys after, we, after I show you the footage, we'll talk about it. So go ahead, look at the footage, and I'll get back to you.
So there's no possible way I can cover everything in this particular episode because I want to keep the video as small as possible. I'm going to go over the key points. All right. Stability. When it comes to the stability of these two gimbals, this gimbal wins out because this gimbal in high wind, say if you stick this, out, this gimbal out the window and you want to get a tracking shot of a car, you want to do a follow following or a car is following behind and you want to stick it out the back window or have somebody do it. This gimbal, when it comes to the stability of it, these motors aren't that strong. So if, if you turn it too quick or if the wind's blowing too hard, it'll actually knock the gimbal out of place and it'll start readjusting itself. All right. This particular gimbal, uh, the stability is great. High winds, you can stick it out of car. Uh, you can pretty much do anything with it. And because the motors are so strong, as long as you don't max out the weight limitations, this gimbal will serve you good when it comes to stability. Awesome job on this. This is good too, as long as you just either use lighter cameras or just know that you can't do jerky movements with it real quick or you'll throw it right out of balance and you can't be real, real hard, hard on this gimbal over here. The next one, tracking a moving subject. Now, this gimbal is great for tracking a moving subject because basically it's, a, it's one hand operation and you can sort of guess to a degree where your, your object is moving and you can sort of track it with your hand. Now, you can't get 100% accurate framing or tracking the moving subject with this gimbal because depending on what camera you have, most cameras, the back LCD is going to be blocked. And then some cameras, the LCD turns off when it actually goes in front of the viewfinder. So you really can't tell how you're framing. Now, with this gimbal, because it's a little wider and because of the way uh, the bars are a, a lot further apart, you can see the back of the screen a lot better and you can get your framing a lot better with this gimbal. And then you can flip this gimbal upside down and uh, basically be looking right at the back of your screen. And I'll show you how you do that. You just take it. Obviously, it's not a camera on here. I know that. But you take it and basically like that. So you'd be holding it like this. And you can basically see exactly what's on the back of the camera and frame your shot a lot better. Now, you can also flip the Nebula 4000 light upside down. And I'll show you what that looks like. You can flip it upside down. And obviously, you have to uh, flip this some kind of way. But it's a way you can do it. I, I haven't done it, but you, you might be able to get better framing like that. You might be able to see the, the screen as long as you make sure your EVF or your uh, what do you call it? Your viewfinder doesn't doesn't uh, cut the LCD off. All right, the next one is ease of use. Now they both sort of have their strengths and weaknesses when it comes to ease of use. Uh, I really can't say which one is easier. It all depends on the situation. It really all depends on the situation, and it really depends on you. For me, a lot of situations, if I have the time this one is easier to use. But if I don't have the time to set up a shot and I'm just grabbing shots really quick, this one would be easier to use. Now the next one is time it takes to balance. This one, it takes a little bit longer to balance just for me. It might be quicker for you, but for me, it takes a little bit longer to balance this gimbal because this one is more forgiving. If you don't get this 100% right, you can still turn it on and the motors are a lot stronger and it can, it can correct better than this one can, just because the motors obviously on here are a lot smaller. So you gotta either small, uh, fly lighter ca cameras or always have the gimbal set to the camera, your camera preference. You have the same lens, basically the same, um, obviously the same body, and you'll be basically putting it in the same exact spot every time you use the gimbal. Uh, next one, weight. Now, this one obviously wins out on the weight department because it's smaller and lighter, but you're also using only one hand. This one, you're able to spread out the weight over two hands. So I would say, obviously, this one is lighter, but this one more comfortable to use, in my opinion. It, it, it's not that heavy for me. It all depends on you, though. A lot of these things are sort of personal preference. Creative shots, I say this one wins out because it has the thumb controller on the back. So not only can it just do the follow mode and things like that, you also have the extra option 
of actually manually controlling it while you're doing different modes. So it wins out in that category. Portability. This one wins out for me. If I'm going somewhere and I'm going on a trip and I don't want to pack heavy, I want to pack light. This one definitely has come with me. If it's a pan gig, I'm definitely taking this one. So portability, obviously that one wins out, but if it's something that I'm getting paid for, it's definitely going to be this. I'll take this as a backup, but this will be my number one. Adaptability. Both of these are very adaptable when it comes to adding extra accessories. This one on this side, I've added a small clamp that has three eighths holes and quarter inch holes so I can mount different things like over here, like a monitor or whatever have you. This on this side, I, I don't really need to mount anything on this right as of yet. But if I would, they actually have three different holes, a quarter inch, a quarter inch, and a three eighths inch hole all tapped. So you can add extra accessories like a monitor with a magic arm. I've even seen people where they use the bottom uh, screw holes to mount these kind of handlebars. And I'll show you the picture. So they both are relatively adaptable when it, when it comes to adding extra accessories. So weight limitations. Obviously, this gimbal right here is going to max out at 1,000 grams. This one is going to max out a lot higher. I believe it's three kilograms. I'll put the information right here. But like I said, it's able to take a lot more weight and it's able to take heavier cameras than this one. So if you want to fly heavy cameras like your Canon cameras, this one is the way to go. You know, if you want to fly the GH4 or the Sony A7S with the Metabones adapter and then a Canon lens, you might be better off going with one of these unless you're going to be using just one particular lens, like a small, you know, very compact lens that 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 doesn't, uh, you know, max out that weight of 1,000 grams over here. So that's basically it. I try to keep it as quick as possible. Now, there's almost no possible way to keep these reviews quick just because there's so much information to pass along to you guys. So that's why we have to do other videos. So if you guys want another video like this and you guys want to see this gimbal and say hanging off the back of a car and this one hanging off the back of a car and seeing how they operate, I pretty much know the results and what's going to happen. But if you guys want to see anything like that, just leave it in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, obviously, I'm no expert in, in gimbalology or anything like that. So uh, with that being said, rate, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace.